President Carter continues to be his own lobbyist in his push for a compromise on a natural gas bill. The farm and food industries are very dependent upon a stable and a steady supply of natural gas. And today, the president met with people from those industries trying to convince them to help him convince Congress that his plan is a good one. We have this report. In something of a pep talk for agriculture industry supporters of the natural gas Compromise, President Carter said rejection of the bill would mean inadequate gas supplies, where passage would depend on natural gas. I hope that you will take an active role and let the members of Congress uh, who look upon you for a little, how strongly you feel in support of the legislation. Most members of the group promised to help Carter lobby Congress for passage of the compromise, despite the higher gas prices which would result. They predicted little effect on food prices. We do not believe that the uh, provisions of this bill will cause food prices to rise. We see a very marginal increase in prices, in some cases no increase, for those essential agricultural uses due to the provisions in the bill. What has happened is that uh, we get a priority on supply in times of shortage and a break on prices over the next uh, seven years. So there's no reason for anyone uh, who is in the food or agriculture business not to be 100% for this bill, and that's why all of us are here uh, today. The president will need all the help he can get from this group. A poll of senators shows a third or less currently support the gas compromise. At the White House, this is Mark Tonight, Dr. Martin Avon presents part two of his commentary on the building of a third Senate office building in Washington, even though the federal government is facing a big budget deficit. As I indicated in the previous commentary, the third Senate building will have, among other frills, wood paneling, rooftop restaurant worth $600,000 an indoor tennis court worth nobody knows how much, a new gymnasium worth about $350,000, all of course at taxpayers' expense, the total for the building being $200 million. This building will probably see the light of day, and it represents in itself more than just another added expenditure, another steal from the taxpayers' money. It represents a cynical movement on the part of our Congress, the Senate in particular, to indicate to the American taxpayers that we're not really in such bad shape, or at least not bad enough, for them to practice frugality. As Senator Jesse Helms has indicated, the only way for inflation to be stopped in the United States is to cut out spending. And wasteful spending in the first instance is the responsibility of the United States S S Congress. Our federal debt now stands at $741 billion. That is an increase of $73 billion over the last 12 months alone. Any kind of unnecessary expenditure by our Congress, and that means just about anything that they spend on themselves, is an indication of the cynicism or even contempt that they hold the American people, the taxpayer, in. In Matagalpa, Nicaragua, a ragtag army of... 500 students gave up today in the face of National Guard troops advancing with heavy guns behind armored cars. At least 50 people were killed in the past five days of insurrection against the regime of Anastasio Somoza. Electricity is still out in that town and the streets are dotted with potholes dug by the students to stop the armored cars and the jeeps from advancing. It didn't work. National Guardsmen are patrolling the streets there tonight.